This is an interview with Francesco Giuseppe Genovese as a part of the Italian American World War II Veterans Oral History Project, sponsored by the National Italian American Foundation and the Historical Society of Western Pennsylvania. It is March 31st, yes, 2004, and we are in Oakmont, Pennsylvania. Uh, will you please tell me your full name and date of birth for the record? Francesco Giuseppe Genovese, June 2nd, 1920. And so when did you come to America? Pardon? When did you come to America? I came in 1937. I arrived in New York uh, October, October 28th, 1937. Okay. We, we sailed from Naples. Mm -hmm. uh, the 21st of the October, and we arrived in New York. Seven days, we were in New York. So seven days. So where, where, where is your family from in Italy? We are from Calabria, and Catanzaro province. And what's the name of the village? Maierato. Maierato. It's a nice little town. No? Yeah. Not, they say it's a pretty big town, but that time it was maybe 4,000 4, people, no more, no more than that. Mm -hmm. And um, it was like an agricultural town. Right. Yeah. And so, your father came here first? Oh, my father came here. My father left uh, Europe when he was 15 years old. He went to Buenos Aires first. Mm -hmm. oh. He stayed there in 1900. He left, he, he went there to Buenos Aires. But 1903, he came to New York. With, from Buenos Aires, he came to New York. From New York to Pittsburgh, 1903. And he was a single boy, you know. Mm -hmm. But then he came, he came home in 1911, and he married my mother in 1911. Mm. What did he do in New York, do you know? What did he do in New York? And you know, he came to New York in the, in, in, the mer in, the <coughs> in the ship, in the ship they used to carry animal. Uh -huh. free. No, he worked there and they gave him free passage. And then he was a little young boy, you know. But he, when he came here, he had a different job here, you know, he worked for the mm -hmm. city, he worked for the state, he worked for uh, um, the rail, Pittsburgh Railway, you know. Mm -hmm. he, he, he worked in the greenhouse, you know, he was good in the greenhouse. Mm -hmm. And would he send money back home? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So he would, he would yeah, send he, back home. the immigrant to... life, you know what I mean. Right. He, 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 said, he was the oldest, you know. And they had three sisters mm -hmm. and one brother. And my, my grandma, she was a widow. No? She, uh, my grandfather died when he was a young man. So practically, he raised the family, a father. That's why he, he got married when he was 30, 35 or 36. And that's late. But he has to raise a family. Yeah. Man. So tell me about your, your childhood. In Italy. Childhood? What do you remember about? Oh. What was it like in that time? You well, know. I tell you, in childhood, we didn't do so. It was depression time. It was bad, you know. But as I say, my little time, it was more, you can make a living out of, uh, do a job. See, I learned to be a tailor when I was, when I, when I, well, when I was nine years old, I started to, to learn. A tailor and a barber at the same time. <laughs> And you know what? When I was 12 years old, I used to have my own customers wow. to shave. I had a very light hand. You would go shave and you haircut. And I used to go out on a farm and, and take care of the, those farmer boys and girls. And boys and girls, both together. And you would cut hair? Oh. And I make a living out there. We should believe that. No money, but just to give me food yeah. to take them home. All I want to. And I, my family and my, but the men that teach me to become a barber, the old man, you know. Mm -hmm. he, he, he was an old man and that, all he wanted to eat. But there was no money involved. No money? No. And uh, because it was then 17, when, when I was 50, I used to make a, a suit. We used to work on a suit for the men, too. Mm -hmm. But at that time, they don't pay me, they pay them the, mm -hmm. the, the maestro, you know. Maestro. And, uh, but, uh, and I started to play in a band, you know, in the music. And, um, What instrument? 
saxophone soprano. Oh, Beautiful, yeah. I love that. Though. I still love it. And uh, the, ask me you want about uh, music, and I give you a good answer. <laughs> uh, because I know uh, music is in here for me. And uh, and the rest, you know. <coughs> It's a body that I can tell you as a young boy. But when I came to this country, it was tough for me. <coughs> so you, your father had left Italy, left Italy when you were how old? How old were you, I guess? When, my, fa <coughs> when my father left Italy the last time, mm -hmm. I didn't know my father until I came to this country. Mm -hmm. Because I was only five years old, I forgot, you know what I mean? What can you remember five years old? It was ten, ten after. Ten years after, I didn't see my father for ten years. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And uh, but uh, my father was, was depression times. Eh? Right. He used to send so much money a month, but we make we survive. You know what I mean? And he okay, he would send money home. Oh to yeah, you. oh yeah. yeah. How many brothers and sisters did you have? I had two sisters, and there were three, two brothers. One who died, and two of us are still living. Mm -hmm. Two sisters ahead of me. Then I'm the third one. Then Vince, the fourth one, is dead. And Tony is the baby, you know. He's in the wheelchair. But uh, it's tough, you know. I'm but curious. Did your father serve in uh, the Italian army? No. No? He was underage. So he, he didn't serve no, in World War no, I. He was no. too young. Okay. No, he was underage at the beginning. And when, well, he was only 15 years old. Okay. <clears throat> and then, no, he didn't. He went to Buenos Aires from right. here. No, I was, I, I was the only one who served in the army, and then my kid brother, so he went for mm -hmm. occupation. And my brother Vince, you know, he, he was forever, he didn't, he was a sick boy, you know, you know. He had some kind of asthma as a, as a young boy, you know, they didn't want him young. Yeah. No. No. So when you were growing up <clears throat> at this time, I, Mussolini was in power. Oh, yeah. Can I you tell me about yeah. what... Mussolini? The beginning, Mussolini was a gentleman. He was a good one. Mm -hmm. But the end ended up in a guy. The beginning, in my hometown, we didn't have no electricity, no sewage, no water. You had to go to, the, to get the water. And uh, the street was all dirt, you know. But when they came in, Mussolini, first of all, the electricity, the sewage, and the street. Compulsory. Compulsory. And uh, the school, before everybody was uh, in alphabet and they couldn't, couldn't read or write. Right. But the Mussolini came in, you send your son or your daughter to school or else. And everybody started learning. But then, when I was, when I was 15, they drafted me in uh, what you call the uh, Jovan fascist, you know, okay. young, young fascist. You know. and we used to go there up in the mountain for one month, in the mm -hmm. summertime, you know, for training. Mm -hmm. When I went in the army here, I know I you had to shoot a machine gun better than the one the sergeant. <laughs> this mountain one, uh, uh, they used to put the blindfold and this mountain machine gun and put them to death. Because we were taught as young kids. Yeah. Eh? Here they, they say CC camp here one time, long time ago. Almost the same, see? Oh, here. They did, I had to read the compass, I had to shut the air machine gun, I had to, blow, to go up in the mountain. And they used, we used to have a big binoculars there, you know, on top of the, the mountain. You could see the Ionio and the Tirreno Sea. Mm -hmm. Used to put a dime in there and look at the. It was, it was very educated for the kids, you know. Yeah. There was no more dumb kids. Yeah, no, was... no more dumb kids. Before, well, they could read and write, nothing. But uh, Mussolini... So, did. did you go to school as well, as you were trained? Yeah. So you were going to school yeah. and yeah. learning to be trained? I went tailor. to school, elementary school, and then I went under, under a priest, my mother first cousin. He was, he was a good priest, my mother first cousin. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, my mother's family was, was a poor priest. The men, the 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 men charged the church, and then they were in Don Benimino, and my brother Fusca, four priests, my mother, in the, in the in the family, you know what I mean, cousin. But uh, my mother was a very religious woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Uh, man. See, I remember my mother, she said, uh, son, we got to make the, we got to pay the bills when, we, when she came to this country, you know. I said, where do I get my pencil? What the hell you need the pencil for? So much for the electricity. She used to scratch her hair like this, you know. So much for the electricity, so much for gas, so much. About blah, 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 $14. But then it was $14. And I don't like. She had a good, good, uh, good memory, you know what I mean? She could figure out. And she was, she, she was illiterate. So finally we, we taught her to, to, to write her own name, you know, oh, yeah. to read the, the clock and this, you know. But she was a very extremely intelligent man. My, my father, was well, he was a hard worker man. Right, right. Yeah. And so, why do you, you decided to come to the United States cause to be with your father? Or no, to, for a better life. For a better life. See, I came first. The second year, my father said, well, I got to go back to the old country. And I said, two more years, what the hell for? Either everybody here or everybody there. Make up your mind, I told my father. So what I did, I went to immigration that time. And then I started to learn pretty good, you know. Then. There, I was an, an, an young, a young, a young woman. She was about 60. I call her a young woman, you know. It was bad hair, beautiful, beautiful lady. And I said, please help me. Through and tap. No, I, I knew a little bit of English, but through and tap. I said, I'll tell them the story what happened, what, what they want to do. She says, nonsense. Don't listen to your daddy. Somebody, somebody gave me wrong information. You listen to me. She wrote everything down. This is what you do. Translate. Let somebody translate for you as to, to, to the American con Consul in Naples. One there and one to the embassy in Rome. That's all you need. Mm -hmm. The rest I take care from here. You know, with, it, with it, not even two months, I got the, all the letters back again, the register and everything. With everything in order, all you need to do go to the. Uh, you let you there go when you're off from from the boat in, in Naples, go to the American consul and they take care. And that's it. Well, when you get off of the boat, the, the consul is not too far away, but I know I was there myself. They get everything, everything done. All you need now to send it to us when you go to the little town, the, the, the birth certificate of your kids, mm -hmm. the, the certificate of marriage when you got married, that's all you need. My father went there for Thanksgiving, Easter, the whole family was here. Oh. See, I passed. My father didn't believe in me. They thought I was a no, young kid, what is he, you know? But uh, so you he was surprised. Here. He was surprised. Then he trusted me, see, before I even trusted him. Yeah, I trust <laughs> Like I trusted my son. <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh, I, I, I hustled a little bit, you no? Know? Yeah. yeah. So when you. He came here and how was it at Ellis Island? Did you I didn't go to there. You didn't get no. Ellis Island. How, then how did you get? I'm what is known as an American born abroad. Oh, okay. So I'm American yeah. citizen since I was born. Okay. And I had a hell of a time when I went in the army. Okay, because so you, they, were, you were born here then? No, no, I was born overseas. Okay. In America, born abroad. That's what they call me. Okay. Explain to Jim how that happened. Though. Oh, I'll tell you what happened. Okay. <coughs> My father became a citizen in 19, 1914 uh, or 15, I forgot now. And uh, the law was that uh, at that time, you know, then they changed it around. See, my sister, the, the, my, the firstborn, they asked him when he became a American citizen in Pittsburgh. Okay. But, uh, are you married man? I married man, but he didn't say that he has a daughter. You understand? So he put just my mother, and my sister didn't come here with us because she was not American citizen like we were. But then the law was in effect, see, and the law changed in 1922 20, or 23. But no matter how many kids you have, as long as you're American citizen, 
they became American citizens of Libya. But then they changed the law in 1922. Okay. Or 23, I forgot now. Okay. And that's why, when I went in the army here, they mm -hmm. asked me if I'm an American citizen. And that was, uh, it was an, an old man, a major. I said, no, sir, I'm not. Mm -hmm. They had to find that. Find that. Oh, a week or so later, they called me, called me, called me a damn liar. He said, why do you say you're an, you're an American citizen? I said, not that I know. I come back, I come with the pass American pass I mean, Italian passport. Oh, so you, you didn't know. No, I didn't know. And so your father was American citizen, even though you were born in Italy. Yeah. He was American. You're That's American. right. Oh. The whole family then. Okay. My second sister and three of us, three boys, they're all big. Okay. The, the mistake they make for me. Did your father have to, to give up his Italian citizenship? No. No, but he still... No. Okay. My father died here. Okay. No. But he never... He, he, he went back to Italy, though. That's the last time. Okay. He went back no more. The whole family came. Okay. And then, my whole family, and, uh, and I'm, my brother and I, the only two survived it. The rest are all dead. So what, what was your father doing here in, in Pittsburgh, exactly? What was he doing? He was working. Where at? What did he do? For well, he, he, he used to say, the, less, the best job that he liked, he was working with Randolph and McLean, um, but they raised the flame. Who they what? They raised the Indian team, the Indian team. Oh, uh, garden. He's a, a horticulturist. It was a greenhouse. Oh, greenhouse, okay. yeah. Okay, greenhouse. He was he loved to do that. He was good in that. Mm -hmm. But he also worked in the, in the steel mill, mm -hmm. and he worked in the, with the what you call the Pittsburgh red, red, the street cars, street car company. Oh, street car company. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he worked with the street car company. And uh, he worked in the J no J N L one I uh, don't at a McKee Sports someplace, American Tube or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it was a labor, no? Yeah. A labor. And then what did you do as well? When I came? Yeah. Well I'm I'm a tailor by profession. Okay, so you were a tailor? Oh yeah. All of my life. So where did you find work in on an East Liberty? Believe it or not, you don't believe me, I know, but I can prove to you. I worked for a dollar a day, nine hours a day. A dollar nine hours For a six day. months. Six months. Every day. Downtown. On, oh, downtown. No, oh, here, in East Liberty. In East Liberty. You know where the Cameron Horn building was? No. no. Well, you know what the, the, the railroad station was? Was a Vintex so. store there? No, you didn't know. I think but was right shop there, was, it was all shops there. Mm -hmm. On the second floor, they have a big teller shop there. Yeah. And they put me as an apprentice because they wouldn't pay me the full price. You understand? He's a young Italian boy, no matter how long. And you were no apprentice. Yeah. Put me as an apprentice, a dollar a day. Totally and I was lucky that I got. Yeah. I'm going to it here for a long time. <laughs> yeah. What was the name of the company? Or the tailors? No, Lofreda. Yeah. Lofreda is the name. They were Italian. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I knew how to do a right. different system, but I, I can make a pair of pants, a vest, and you know, I start to work on a jacket. They showed me a different system, big deal, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But then, you know, got to make a living. Yeah, and then, of course, then you're, you're after But then, see, what happened to me, this man that he gave me the job for a dollar a day, he got sick. Mm -hmm. He got sick with pneumonia, almost to die. His name was Capozzi. From there, I went to work at William Penn Hotel downtown. Now listen to this. From, a, from a seven dollars a week, I got to fifteen dollars a week. Now what's the difference between one place and another? Yeah. One place was a union, and one place it wasn't a union. Uh, okay. You understand? But the, the, even the union. Don't give me the, because if they gave me a pool there, I was, I was supposed to make 18 dollars a week. But they still put me as an apprentice also, 15 dollars a week. Hey, 15 dollars a week, and that, those days it was money. Yeah. Because true. we had a good season and a bad season. Yeah. In other words, if you were to work nine months out of a year, you were lucky. Now, of course, this is... You were lucky. This is the depression was and yeah. things were, we're still depression, I mean... And as I say, but I used to go 
Or don't just tell yourself and help them out a little bit, you know. Yeah. And uh, one other for you tonight who was there, you know. They liked me, was a young man, you know, gave me a chance to make a buck. And that was good to them, you know what I mean? When you good, respect the people, yeah, they like you. They give me, give me a buck, a buck and a half, two dollars, you know. At the end of the, the, end of the week, maybe I make it five, six dollars extra. And I used to go to a show, buy a cigarette, you know. Spending money. Yeah. Now, did your dad, did he own a house? Did he have a house? No, oh, we, 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 and, and we bought the house after the war. Okay, after the war, okay. But the, we bought four houses. On the stop of the way. One, yeah. one 14, 12, 14, 16, and 18. The shooting house, the shooting funeral home. You remember? No, no. The funeral home. In the back. On Meadow Street? No. Meadow Street was the shooting funeral home. In the yard. Okay. Stop the way. Okay. Then Winslow. Okay. We stop the way then. We, we bought four houses. You bought four houses? The, the whole building, you know. Right, okay. Four units. Hmm. Yeah. When you were here and was during the Depression, did, did you miss Italy? Did you miss it because you were still uh, learning English? Well, in a way, yes and no. No, then you, you get the, the, young, the young people here. You know, uh, you you kind of forget about them. You know what I mean? Right. But yeah. I, I love it. I like I like my little time. I did like a little time. I'm curious. When you were in the Giovanni Fascisti, yeah. Did they ever tell you about? Did they give? Um, bad things about the United States or any propaganda. They were just focused on teaching about the military, you know, you see, education. You see, what they taught us is them. They taught us to be a good, respect the people, mm -hmm. for bad the orders, the, uh, the law, and, uh, and nobody will bother you. But most of all, respect the people. That was the Mussolini idea. Yeah. Did you have any difficulties with with the government, the fascist government, leaving no, Italy? No, not me. No. Okay, I thought. Was a lot of people they had did they didn't believe Mussolini, but with, the, with us they were young, you know. Yeah. 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 Okay. No, they they treat us nice, you know, and they they I remember <clears throat> when we play in a band, you know, in the school when we go to school in the morning, we used to be two or three old people, you know, one with the trombone and one with the Play in, 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 we used to sing every morning in school, mm -hmm. the morning prayer. And the two people, three people, they used to play the, the clar clarinet or whatever. And we used to sing. Mm -hmm. So, I guess after you were in, by the time the war started in uh, 41, were you still a tailor? And yeah. You were, of course, yeah. all creative. All, all, yeah, all, all, all the time. Tailor, yeah. Do you ever play in a band, huh? Yeah. Yeah, you play in a band too, here? No, no, not a oh, band, yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, see, in 19, 1941, mm -hmm. I missed the draft. Okay, you missed the draft, okay. And then in 42, mm -hmm. they got the deferments because my kid brother was still in high school, okay? Mm -hmm. To support, to help the family. No. But in 19, and then they got me in the end. I had to go. Mm -hmm. I went, I went in 1943, I went in the end, and I come out in 46. 1943. Yeah. And uh, I had a little bit tough time you know, when I went in the end. My English yeah. wasn't so good, no. Mm -hmm. But uh, I learned a lot. Yeah. Did you ever go to classes for English, or you just, you picked it up? What? You like go to classes or at the Kingsley House or are you just... Well, yes and no. Uh -huh. We went to the Kingsley House to swim, like, you know, mm -hmm. with my cousin, they taught me. But I never liked to swim, you know, because when I say, I almost drowned one time and I went up out of water. Yeah. But I used to go there, you know, and... Um, Where'd you learn English? Jim's asking where you learned to speak English. Well, I learned to speak English, you know. It's, uh, Kids will have there, it was uh -huh. good. And uh, the Larmor School, I was a good student at Larmor School. But then the doctor story, she said to me, she spoke French good, that woman. And I can understand a little bit French. This is not good for you. 
the class. So it was all the people. So she put me in the black with a black student. Oh, okay. It was about ten of them. That's mm -hmm. how I started to learn English. She she spoke to them, help this boy. Okay. And you'd be surprised how nice they were to me, those mm -hmm. those black people. And I loved them. You know. They were all, all middle aged, you know. Yeah. And they were their evening schools, you know, like that me. Oh, okay. But uh, they taught me all of us, so they they were after me. They look at me, you know. Just like one of them. Yeah. And then, then I began to like them, see? Yeah. yeah. And uh, so I went back to Dr. Story. That said, now you go to Western House. And from there I went to Western House yeah. in that school, yeah. Okay. But then again, I learned good when I went in the army. Okay. I learned good, no. Yeah. But actually, I never. When. Uh when Pearl Har Harbor happened, and I guess in Italy declared war in the United States, what was your feelings? Well, uh, before I didn't believe, it was on Sunday morning, I was still in bed, I heard the radio. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it, w it, was, it was, you know, when, when Mussolini declared war in the United States, I said, this son of a bitch is crazy. <laughs> but uh, then they started to turn against him, see? not mm -hmm. me alone, but it was a lot of in my, in my same shape as I was, you know. You, you declare war against the United States. What, what chance you got? And, uh, but, uh, well, let me tell you when I went in the yard. <coughs> this, you're gonna like it. <coughs> I went to, they dressed up my the first test, Take a guess of what they sent me. They sent mm -hmm. me to, I, uh, I started Harrisburg, what's the name of the town there? It was the capital of the United States at one time. Philadelphia. No. Uh, Philadelphia. No, no, no. York. York. York, Pennsylvania. Okay. They sent me there, it was like an old camp, George Washington camp there. Okay. To learn, take a guess of what? Italian language. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta believe me, it's the gospel truth. I got a big certificate like this, you know. Oh, be, the best student. The teacher was from Philadelphia, a young boy, you know. You didn't know, you didn't know how to speak, you speak a hundred times better than you. We make a deal. He taught him in English and I taught him in, in, in Italian. I was number one in, in <laughs> with the high order. And I said to the, to the colonel, he graduated. I said, colonel, I got a degree in Italian language. He left as well as to the army rules. <laughs> I was supposed to go to Italy for, for G, uh, G5 and, and to make it, um, what they call them, um, to deal with the civilian people, you know, oh, okay. with the army. But uh, uh, then that time the, ra the king of Giuseppe and then the war was over with Italy. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I didn't have to go. So this is in France, Then I went yeah. to the, in the infantry. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, would, I went in the army with the infantry. We should not bad. Yeah. I became a good machine gunner. Yeah. So, you were in 1943. You were drafted, and right afterwards, you went to York. And you did well, your, when, you did Fort, your, when, they keep they keep me there at the center for 14 days, and Tony Troyan, the lawyer, was with me. It was three of us, two Italian, one German. We, from, from, uh, from 12, from 12 award in the river. I said to Tony, Jesus Christ, you're a lawyer. Why the hell didn't you come find out why we're here? <laughs> he come back and says, you're right. I, he never thought about that, no. He said, you and I, we were born in, in, in Italy. The Germany was born in Germany. I don't know what happened. The, two days after, we got, we got out of there. Mm. They were holding back because they had to find out where. Well, right. oh. Tony, of course, Tony went in, 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 in. He was a lawyer. He went to the different camp, you know. And that's I went to to learn a, a Italian language. You should believe that, man. And then, did you? So I was there pretty good. I, I like him. Did, did you face any uh, discrimination because you were Italian? Mm. Well, the beginning, they resented me. 
Esimerkiksi meidän pitää käydä bionestoja. Ainoa, että niissä on saanut tuolla. Mutta ei ole ihan normaalia. Mutta ei ole diskriminaatio. Mutta nyt olen siinä haastattelun in England. Mm-hmm. Tell the story first about when you were drafted. I mean, you must know about how you were treated here, not in Europe. Oh, here yeah. I was treated very good. No, here they were. Yeah, yeah. They respected me, they helped me. Hello. Because. Uh, Hello. No. You know what I mean? And they, 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 it was down the south, and southern, the south is good. They, they, you know, they, they respect me, they, like, like a, I didn't understand when they spoke to me, you know, because it, they, they speak different than we do here, but they, they took care of me good, yeah. But when I went to, when in overseas, you know, in, in England, that goddamn woman, you know, I hear her, a nurse. A nurse, yeah, nah. an American nurse. Yeah. She was English, wasn't she? She was American, posted little ten, from from North Carolina. Oh yeah. Now see, and my daughter was from here, from the North of Pennsylvania. He was a friend of Dr. Genovese. Dr. Genovese was a chemist for for the for the Standard Oil Company. Mm-hmm. So I said to the doctor, I said, doctor, I said, I, I don't feel like it. I got I got hurt in the water, a spinal concussion, and. Um, So the, the doctor said, you don't have to get up. Tell the nurse to get up a little run. So like a gentleman, I told him, he said, Mrs. Evans, Lieutenant Evans. The doctor, the, the captain told me, like, get up, you dirty dead on Now, my body is in the side I wouldn't take that if I were you. I pretend that I've been here. But the second time she said, get up, you dirty dead go up. Ah. I had one of those uh, English cups. Uh-huh. We were drinking a cup. I hit the side of my bitch. Huh? She ducked and I hit the wind. It went through the wind. Uh-huh. I was caught in my shoulder. Right? It's so in my record. But, see, I was supposed to be coming to a Philadelphia hospital to recuperate. GI, zone of interior. Instead of that, they caught my shoulder. Me, but, see, it was. Father Black, he was a Lutheran preacher. He helped me a lot. He was my lawyer, and I didn't know nobody else. The court was a full call. So this, this preacher would come up and told me, I would you like to be for, for first of ten. So they have, to, they have to punish me. Instead of sending me to Philadelphia Hospital, GI, 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 they sent me to Paris Hospital. Would you believe that? Paris. Instead of to come to Philadelphia, yeah, they sing in to punish me, they send me to Paris. <laughs> so I was in France a second time, you understand? Oh, so you, you were in England at this time? Yeah, I was in England. And that's when you had the... Had a Instead of sending to Philadelphia, yeah, they send you to Paris. To punish me, they punish me, they send me to, to France. Are you like that? Huh. So there... And that's it. Then I, then I got a bit tired. Then I went to the car. I said, give me some kind of job. I'm crazy, you know. And I, I, was, and I, I couldn't stay doing nothing. I got to do something. That's me. So he put me in the uh, uh, MP duty in my, in my turn. turn. Okay. And what I see there, I don't like it. You know, the life of Paris. Forget it. Hmm. Yeah. So, in, so after you got your degree, an Italian, your Italian degree, like you, yeah, need, you yeah, needed it. Yeah, I, I still got it someplace. So you went to, um, they trained you to be a machine gunner, right? Is that what they no, did? No, I went to, I went to infantry camp. No, I went. Okay. Yeah. And where was this at? Where was the infantry camp? South Carolina. In South Carolina. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice, They used to build their camp, you know. Mm-hmm. And, uh, i like that, I like that little camp. We used to go to uh, Spartanburg was one time, close to it, and the other one was, uh, the other one I forgot the name now. They used to be, they used to be, they used to be fight between the, the infantry and the, and, the, and, the Marine, and the Navy. So then they cut one night the Navy and one night the, the infantry. So there was to be no more fight. Yeah. Can 
kind of, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to backtrack here. I still want to clarify something. Um, so when you got drafted, okay, um, you, 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 you questioned it because you were an American citizen, right? Or you, you were American citizen, but you didn't know. I didn't know. And then you, you went to the, I guess, the draft office. No, this happened in camp when we got. Okay, you got to camp. When we got to camp. Yeah. Explain Before that. they send you oh. to another place. Yeah, they, they, it's, everybody goes there and then they assign you where to go. Now, well, I got drafted here in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. Pittsburgh, they send me. They York. Uh, York. No, they send me to that camp toward the, between Washington and Baltimore, what the hell the name they can. Called Mead? Fort Mead. Okay. From Fort Meade, then they, they send us, see? And, mm -hmm. and then they send you whatever they need. There, they send me to become, uh, to, 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 to Lord Natalia. To you, okay. And I started Harrisburg, see? There, as I said before, the war was over with Italy. The king mm -hmm. went out, uh, surrendered. <coughs> and so they, they took me out from there, they were graduated from there. They sent me to a camp blending infantry camp. They didn't need no more interpreter or whatever, see? And I lost out of that because I could have been nine, you know. Mm. I could um, I could have went to to Italy you know, with with the arm of course, you know. And being interpreter was which I wasn't interpreting French language, which was really. So we're in French too. Yeah, when we learned the French, I knew a little bit French, you know. Uh -huh. And then of course I learned more. Right. Yeah. So as, I say, as I said, as I said, back in the old country, I had a monk with this, you know. He, he taught me pretty good. Oh, a monk, yeah. Yeah, and he was a monk. Yeah. Hey, I could see the feel the five fingers across my neck. Oh Jesus. <laughs> yeah, he was my mother's first cousin too. First cousin. Yeah. Yeah. The, Oh, well, I can see a very just black all over there. <laughs> one of his friends. Yeah. The, the, the teacher, then he's making you, and then taking over. I mean, uh, and you went home, you tell your mom and daddy, yeah. you got the rest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got a beating there and you got a beating there. Yeah, but, but, but you teach a teacher, you must done something. Pa, pa, <laughs> <laughs> So, you found out in the army, right? Um, or you, you were an American citizen. Yeah, that's when I found out. And the major or the colonel or your officer says, oh, you're... Yeah, he called me, he called me a damn liar. You know? So you're a damn liar. You but the, pri the priest says, he's not a liar. Yeah. Check it out. Okay. And you know, he apologized. Did he? Oh, he apologized. Mm -hmm. And the first time I heard the word apologize, I never heard it before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he apologized for me. So uh, in South Carolina today, what what division was this, or what unit were you in? That was uh, it. Just was not a division. It was training camp. Okay, it was a training camp. Okay. Then from there, they once you trained there for seventeen weeks, you know, then you, they send you. I was, they sent me to the Fourth Infantry Division. So you were there. You were there for seventeen weeks. Yeah. Wow. Training. Training. Okay. And what division? The then I, that was sent to. Fourth, fourth Infantry Division. Fourth. 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 Quattro. Okay. Twenty second Infantry. Fourth Infantry. Which they fight now in the the fourteenth division fight in, in the Iraq. 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 Oh really? Oh. The fourth division was destroyed three times. Was it? Was it just destroyed completely? Really? They, they kept building, 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 building. So we were. We landed on D Day. Yeah. Even all the way to the Rhine River. You were in a replacement, were you? No. You huh? A replacement, they called it? No. You were. I was assigned with them. Okay. And in, in, in South Carolina, it, you were training to the fire South machine. South Carolina, we, we were training. What kind of gun was it? What kind of machine gun? What was it? Every kind of one. Machine gun, mortar. Mortar. Yeah. Uh, what caliber is that? Yeah, it was it? Okay, we had a 30, a 30 caliber and, and 50 caliber. 50 caliber, okay. Yeah. Then we had the, the, tri, the, the, the tripart, 
a rifle with the three bullets at a time, mm -hmm. and uh, they shot up machine gun, the little one. Mm -hmm. And no, we they was good was good camp, good the training. They hand to hand combat, mm -hmm. and uh, we had amphibious train. Mm -hmm. We went all the way down from um, Port Benny. We went to deeper at the border, like into Florida. Mm -hmm. Maybe to the jungle warfare in the swamp, in the swamp there, you know. Oh, oh really? but they, they was good, they, they come up good soldiers from there, you know. For little men that I am, and I was him, I'm a little man, you know. you'll be surprised you know, how tough I was. You have to be. Yeah, I was only 23, 23 years old. On your first day in this training, what was your emotions? Were you scared? Were you gung ho? How? I think it, How did you feel when you were training and, and you feel that what you want to learn some more? Yeah, you want to learn. Because I tell you why, that I knew some from the old country. Okay, because you were in the jail. Yeah. yeah, the only thing I couldn't. <coughs> so we had one lawyer up in Baloy, one officer. He was he was a good teacher, but I couldn't understand him. You know, that's a different down south, no. Yeah. And uh, but uh, finally I came in with one that I could understand better, and I asked him. He was. Partial Italian, not not full, you know. Half maybe it was half a breed, in other words, you know. I call half a breed. <laughs> and then uh, he, he, he could explain a little bit more, see. His mother was a, a Mexican, I believe. And that's the one he killed the dog. Mm. He, he, Jim wants to know what your emotions were like when you got were you scared? Yeah. No, I wasn't scared. No. no. As I say, when, when you know the begin, but, but you, uh, tomorrow we go do this, we go to the range, machine gun range, motor range, you know. You, you know, you, you focus on that. Focus. You know yeah. what I mean? And uh, no, I wasn't scared. As a matter of fact, I was never scared. No. Never. The only time I got scared, when uh, that time General McNair got killed, General Roosevelt got killed. That I got scared. Who got killed? General Roosevelt. General McNair. McNair. And General Roosevelt. Wow, General Theodore Roosevelt. Roosevelt's grandson. Oh, he was okay. second in command of my division. Oh, oh, wow. And this is in this is in Europe. The fourth in Yeah. They got killed. See, they, they, the eight the eight air force came from England. Okay. The Battle of Saint Law, it's called the Big Battle. And they split like in the head. And you see that a lot of soldiers without a head split into oh god that's the old time i was afraid i got a little bit of shake after him hey god could be a man without a head yeah you know what i mean so after um after your training after 17 weeks in south carolina yeah you were shipped to england right we went to boston you went to boston yeah we went to boston part of embarkation then we stayed three weeks here. Mm -hmm. And then I was trained to become an MP there, see. We used to go one day to Providence, one day to Rhode Island, control of the air and, until we got on a boat. From there, we were on a boat, we landed in Liverpool, England. From Liverpool, we stayed three more days, aboard a train, we went to Scotland. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then from Scotland we come back, we went to South Hampton, we stayed there for a little while across the, across the, across the shell, taking amphibious, we practiced, you know, amphibious. Mm. We lost one boat with 40 soldiers in there. Mm. They got them, them they got them, the submarine got them. Yeah. Submarine. Because we were pretty deep, you know. So you landed on D-Day? No, I landed on uh. D-plus 10. D plus 10, okay. Because, uh, I don't know if you read something, there was a lot of, the 15, 15, 20, tw uh, 8, 15, 22nd, I was in 22nd. The 8 and the 15, they then the first. Okay. Then on D-Day. Then the, the storm division. came. The real storm, I don't know if you heard it, but mm -hmm. we couldn't go. Okay, yeah, okay. Because you could see the body floating in the water, the dead. Mm -hmm. But then when we landed, the war was up to here with me. And I had a damn trap part machine gun, you know. 
Well, you had a tripod. Yeah, yeah, because you use a machine gun. Yeah. You know, you see the tripod, you put the machine gun, and you start to, you know. So you're the man who carried the tripod. Ah. And then what else, what other weapons did you have with you? Did you have M1? I had a pistol, 45. Yeah. Only a pistol? That's all. No M1, no nothing else? No. Hmm. And of course, we had a trench knife, you know, carry here. Okay. Yeah. So when did, when did you land in, in England, in Liverpool? And of course, 1944, but in May or what month did you land? 19, oh, it was, it was a, yeah, it was early. Mm -hmm. After Easter, we sailed, we got there before Easter. Mm -hmm. We went to Scotland, no, we went right, to Scotland. Right, you went to Scotland. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We took a lot of train in Scotland. I love Scotland. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. And you were trained? Amphibi amphibious, so yeah, you, you were on the boat and you were landing. Yeah, so then we went to Southampton, or Southampton. Yeah, Southampton. There, oh, there. Oh, when they give you, you go on a ship there, they give you the real, the real, the real guns and the munition. You understand? Yeah. yeah. That's when you, you get a little bit, they give you a shot too. Oh, a shot? Oh, yeah. For what? Just well, I don't know, you, you shots. Yeah. You don't give it them, you live or die, in other words. What kind of shot they were. All right, so you were... We, we, we were, as I say, going in, in, in night. You know. So I, I was so hungry with my buddy, let's go to eat in the little restaurant there. And uh, we went in there, and they come and say, those, they speak two languages. They, 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 they were the one who, who takes care of uh, they speak two languages. The waiters. Yeah. When you go to the restaurant. The waiters. The waiters, yeah. So he asked me, what do you want? I understood it. Qu'est-ce que vous Je voulais manger. And, uh, but she is something. What do you want to eat? I don't know how to say what I, what I want. I said, bring you something to eat no matter what, no. Take a guess about me. A big ball of, of a snack. Oh. That's quite good. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy, I love them. Put the hot peppers in, you know, <laughs> the French bread, you know, and one fiasco of wine. You know. Three o'clock in the morning. I eat the whole goddamn thing myself. <laughs> I told them. Boy, that I really love them. The, my, my body didn't want it. Oh, I don't eat that. Oh, okay, eat what you want. <laughs> They want the, the mignon steak. Oh, you, you, you have to get the mignon steak. <laughs> and then they have it. But uh, the guy told me, you know, I knew you were Italian. And I know you Italian you like people. That's about that. And they spoke Italian better than me. <laughs> but he, he wasn't Italian. He was a, they studied, you know, two uh -huh. or three languages mm -hmm. to wow. become Italian. Of course, you know, when you tip them good, you come back again, that's which you good. In those days, money was no money. You have money to, to give away. Mm. So, so you were. Um, of course, that was in, you were in Paris, though, right? All well, this cargo. So, getting back to you were in England and you were in Southampton. Yeah. And um, of course, this was. Were you in Southampton when they invaded? They, when D Day happened. Or you Did that was uh, on the sea. You were on the sea. On a board a ship, yeah. When, when seven they... days there. For seven days, twice a day, I sheep and fish and fish and, uh, and what they call that. Uh, what they, I forgot what they call. I forgot what they call. And so it, twice a uh, ten o'clock in the morning. And five o'clock in the evening. Well, he's asking, were you on your way to England when D Day happened? Were you already in England when it happened? We were in England. You were well, in yeah, England. England. We were aboard a ship. Right, you were aboard a ship. Aboard a ship, those are small ships that go across the, the channel. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. As I said, the only thing to hold back is the storm. All right, the storm. Uh, no, come, come, come from Boston, no, no. no. Okay. But the big convoy ever crossed to Europe, to Europe. From Boston, to Liverpool, England. We had two, one battleship with us, three cruisers. Mm -hmm. It was a big, uh, the, well, the army, you know. It was the biggest convoy ever crossed there. And they were afraid because you know, there was a lot of soldiers involved. Yeah. 
the first, the third, the fourth, and the eighth. I was a power six division. Wow. They went from different places. Eh? Some they came from uh, the after them very the, um, people, you know. Ethiopia. Okay. You know, and the, some they come from other places. And they all meet in the high sea. And they got they all through, you see, they was, uh, Liverpool was a, it's a big port. Right? Mm -hmm. Big one, I think it's bigger than New York. Big. So, uh, just, um, I'm curious. Did you, did you want to go to Italy though? Did you want I to return? I tried three times, young man. So you wanted to go? The first time I was supposed to leave from Cherbourg okay. to go to Livorno. No, I'm just, I'm asking them um, when, um, when they said that you're, you're going to England oh. to, to, to invade or with the infantry, would you have preferred to go back to Italy to, well, to fight yes, with the I'm, army I'm, instead yeah, of going to France? No, see, that was, that was a change. It, it well, would have changed, been the beginning, yes. You wanted to. But then it was a change, yeah. And, uh, but um, what I, what, when I come out, when I was then, when I was sick in the hospital, I come out the hospital, I went to, to Pesha. When I was in Pesha, I'd I like to go to, to what you call no. Mm. Say, hey, how are you? How are you? Okay. And uh, I'd like to go, but see, see, like I was supposed to go from, from Schaumburg one time to mm -hmm. Lehorn, Livorno, in mm -hmm. Italy. Mm -hmm. We were supposed to leave on Sunday night. On, on Friday morning, the order was changed. We moved from one place to another. That was canceled. The second time, I was supposed to go to the Bremer Pass, mm -hmm. to Austria, you know, and come to the north. It was a change. So the third time I said, please, excuse my English. So the captain says, you know what? Why don't you go see the Scandinavian country? Holland, Norway, and uh, whatever, forgot the other one. Give you 15 days pass. Money I had, where do you have it close? I went there the month of June, no, the month of August. It was cold. Right? It was cold, huh? It was cold. So you got to, you got to but it was a beautiful, the best vacation I ever had in my life. <laughs> beautiful. Mm. The people were so friendly with you, you know, yeah. the American soldiers, American. They were very well So you landed, so, again, I'm kind of going back, but. You landed on what, June, June 10th then, or June 6th, and, and on D-Day? On D-Day, no, There's D-Day plus, plus 10, so that'd be 16. But, it, right. yeah, I remember the 10. Mm. And, uh, uh, when, you la when you landed on the beach, what did it, what did it look like? What was going on? Oh. Was, there was no more you, fighting. You see the, the, the water on the beach, it was body all over the place. Yeah. Every time I remember that, I get sick, you know. And, but uh, I remember when we landed, you know, we were still fighting. They were, fighting, they, were uh, uh, the they had a machine gun and uh, also they, 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 they those long distance uh, cannon mm -hmm. from inside of the, the, the wall. See, they were shooting. When we landed, I never remember, Lieutenant Colonel, nice man. He lost his leg, one leg. Boom! Man. He went back to the boat, to England. Mm -hmm. Nice man. So whenever you get there, he used to do like Napoleon used to do. Bend down, grab a handful of sand, and squeeze until the color falls from your hands. That means God will help him. He was a good man. I liked him a lot. But Colonel, Colonel Beery, a southern, so. nice man. The southern people are very good, and I like the southern people. Yeah. So, after you got off, how, how, did, you, how did you get on the beach? You were in a, one of those barges? Those barges. Yeah. Okay. barges, barge. you go close to there, uh -huh. and when you open it, and you walk, and the water up to here with me. I'm sure, uh, the short men in the company, yeah. <laughs> believe it or not. Six one, six two. Here I'm my five five. five the, I think I was five six, 137 pounds. 
But now I'm up five, five, three. I swung three inches. <laughs> but uh, I was straight as a numb and run. What the hell are you going to do? No. So, uh, how, did you, how did you go inland? You, you get in a, were, you, were you in a jeep? And, oh, yeah. And, uh, we, we, truck, we, we and in the road on the top of the tanks. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. See, we were spearhead division. Okay. You know what spearhead division means? No. Okay, they give. So you're supposed to pick up a seven point seventeen. Mm-hmm. Okay, you leave. You get a month on on a, on a, on the tanks. Mm-hmm. And we we rode the tanks until we got there. But we got there. We were fighting like hell, you know, left and right. We got there. You surround and wait until the other units come up. Okay. You hold the place here. In other words, it would be. The enemy, they have no chance, they got to fight you before they can fight them, you understand? That's what they call spearhead division. And we lost quite a few people like that, no. But uh, that's where we were. And uh, when we got there, then we rested here, but it was danger. Mm. And that's what I told you about, I, I don't know if I told you, <clears throat> while we there, they got to make it, uh, what they call a night patrol, during night. We had a Mexican man, we, we, he was good with the night. And they got them German dogs, you know. They were barking like hell. And, no, and that's no good because the enemy knows that you're there. If you shoot them, the dog, then they know you're there. They, they bombard with the, with the cannon. And they, Let me just tell you something, bitch, you got the knife, you know. He turned. Ah! I saw he heard. He killed the, he killed the dog with the knife. That's it. Nice man. But uh, the first time I see a man kill a, 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 a dog with, with a knife. With a knife. Mm-hmm. Well, his name is Ernesto. I never forget mm-hmm. Ernesto. Nice man. He spoke some pretty good Italian. You know? He spoke Italian. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So when you. Um you went to St. Lowe, right? Oh, the Battle of St. Lowe, yeah. Tell me about that. St. Lowe, oh, Christ. Five o'clock in the morning, soon the day, well, the day day about four o'clock. But around five o'clock, we storm. We got to St. Lowe. Six o'clock in the, e- six o'clock in the evening, we have to come back with the job. See, in the morning, we went in and got it. In the evening, the general came in and got sent us back, mm-hmm. baptized. So finally, one morning, we, but by three o'clock in the morning, it was not daylight yet. The eight and the nine Air Force from England, they come in. And they drop, they, they split in two. The city. And they, the city yeah, they surround, you know, they split. And they, the, those, some of them bombed, they fought a little bit short. Mm-hmm. And that's when they, we, got, we lost a lot of people from our own be, bomb, plane. Friendly fire. Right. General McNair and General Roosevelt got sick, got killed. I know. Oh, they got, they, that's how they got killed. Yeah, that's how they got killed. They say no, they didn't blah, blah, I know they got killed. Mm-hmm. And you're supposed to shut up, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No. But what I saw there, young man, it was incredible. No, you got to you see a man split in two. You know, you start to, you, 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 lose, you, you lose your cool, but you know what I mean? You, and, but they, they give, us, give us a shot, you know, to, they got them shot to help, sometimes they don't help, you know. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are a little bit nuts. You know what I mean? Yeah. God forbid. So, so they would give you a shot? They give us a shot all over the place, you know. When you were, in, yeah, during to, combat, to, when to, you were in the field, to, yeah, to to you calm you down, yeah, and you got. I know, I know they got. And sometimes they give us to drink in the in the in the, in the coffee or in the lemon blend, whatever you call. It. What, what Lemonade, they, you know. What do they put in it? This they put something in there. Who knows? You don't know. You know what it was called, or what? You know? I guess it would be Valium. Okay, Valium. Yeah, I guess. Okay. I don't know what it was. You know, they they put a they they make a fifty gallon of. 
uh, ginger ale or whatever, they put some in there and we have, you know. Mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But I know you, you come up and you, you don't give a damn for the world, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So after you drink this, you yeah. Know. yeah. Yeah. When you first experienced combat, what was. First, I thought it was a joke. Yeah. The machine gun, no. It doesn't see nobody. Yeah, but uh, when you see people fall in front of you, maybe you, you, you're thinking about it. But you know, when you're 20 young, like I did, they'll tell you, all the way, take a cover. Be alert, take cover. You hear something, drop down, keep look. That's what in your country, that. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did. My buddy and I, we used to drop behind the stone and behind the all the time. Okay. And, but then, what got me a little bit shook up. I killed one German. I know I did. The guy forgave me. And then, it was him and I. See, the, 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 the hedgerow fight, you know, the hedgerow fight. You know, the heads are high. Mm -hmm. We're watching them. Some they put the steel helmet, but the, that particular point we did, I know. It was one German and I, we both of them were gone. I was a little bit faster than him. I shot him. Oh, I went to the priest, or oh, 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 oh. and, uh, but, uh, sure, I, because it, it, you kill a man, for Christ's sake, you know what I mean? And, uh, but, uh, it him and I. Another time I see another German soldier, you know, that maybe some of the dogs got, after they killed him, was part left over, some, some man would show him up. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, mm. how much can you take anymore? Yeah. But that's a gospel truth. So, during the Battle of, of St. Lo, you were with the machine gun and... Oh, yeah, you, everybody, you were, everybody that's drew how up. You were big, big deal, after there was catastrophe, catastrophe, we got the three days off to recuperate. Okay. And you didn't need the three days off. Oh, oh what... Oh. That, cat, that I remember too. The Battle of St. Lo was the one. Carantani was the two, and the, the last one, three. Three battles that I never forget as long as I live. And what was the last one? What was it? The last one was the, um, mm. the last one was, what the hell, I forgot the name of it. When the Germans come back again from... Uh, Bulge. Uh, the Bulge. Bulge. The battle of the Bulge, yeah. That the last one, I remember. Mm -hmm. And we got stuck in there. We will come home to rest. We will come home mm -hmm. to rest and we got started. That's how we got the bell of the bulge. Mm. Sort of accidental. Huh? Yeah. It was an accident. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, the bell of Carantan, the Carantan reminded me of like a pen hill when you go down towards the river. Mm -hmm. It was a, a little small time, but it was a very important time, see. And a uh, small, small village, a European village, you know what I mean? Dead in a big time. But uh, a lot of people died for nothing. You know, the Germans were a little bit fanatic, you know. You know you lost. What was, when, when we first got to Germany, this is another one, when we first got to Germany, we crossed the frontier between Belgium and Germany. There was a little creek divided the frontier. See? When we got the other side, the creek, first thing they did, they took out the gas mask, which I, 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 I don't want to give to them. I did. I had a lot of stuff in it. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I had a, a bulb of Chanel No. 5 that I stole from <laughs> From uh, from a uh, shop, they say. And I put me there. Say, when I go home, I will take more. <laughs> <laughs> but I never did take more. And uh, oh, we stole a lot of stuff. 
There was a beautiful little town. You can see in the Christmas card with the one deep or church deep, you know. Mm -hmm. They had the white flag. When you put the white flag, according to Geneva Convention, you, you surrender. Right. <laughs> but the major, he was a smart man. He was, he was a smart man. He was from South. He sent we, we, in three, three companies. One, two, and three. He sent one the Indonesia and one in the middle. One in the middle got a little bit hurt. When they got in the back, the middle, from the salvation, from the people, they started to shoot. Seven soldiers were up there. Mm. They opened up fire, they killed a lot of the men. So what the, what the major did, he called back the units. Because the 44 field artillery ordered with the white phosphorus, burned the town. He used a white phosphorus. White phosphorus. White phosphorus. You know, it burned everything. It, it, burn, it burned the town. So I'm going to Geneva. When you put the white flag, you surrender, you die. You don't, that's your hard time. So they, the Germans, they didn't. They didn't there was the, we, oh, seven soldiers. No, it was empty. It was empty? Yeah. It was empty. But then, no more. You don't find them no more. They, 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 they make the 14th infantry in business. You, 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 you heard man, I heard you too. They didn't do no more. They, they see the German soldiers, they, they went away, you know, they hide for a little while, but then they come up in the public. They were worse than the, the French. If you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Tell me about the German soldiers. Were they, were the they, German they soldiers, were, you said they were fanatics, they were... The German soldiers, the real soldiers, you don't care. The SS troopers, they were the... The, the SS, the tankers, you know, the special corps, special troops, they were the fanatic one. You know, the one they were walking along, you know. But uh, the, the rebel soldier, you know, the GI soldier, what we call mm -hmm. them, he was, like, he was even given the name of a soldier, you know. You know what I mean? But uh, uh, I give, I like one, was one. I even work in a guest in a in a guest in a guest uh, station, guest room station, mm -hmm. in Antwerp, Belgium. Mm -hmm. I was there, see, and uh, they, uh, you see, this 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 couple, they were good, good soldiers. They were working by by the the sheep, you know. And uh, he come up and said to to me, Aktum. I know, but I couldn't mean attention, you know. It's danger. In other words, to tell, to tell us, you know, there was a danger in a guest room station. Mm -hmm. But uh, you, you can understand. So he says, he called us. It was a, you know, we, we had a little guest room station for a little while. And, that, and it was a real danger. That then the pump was, you no, know, it could explode. And, you know, we took care of him pretty good. You know, we gave him a lot of food to eat, you know. They were working on the port. Mm -hmm. see, yeah. But this you're going to like. It was a man, a captain from Canadian troops. He was sent food from the port to Holland, to the, to the, 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 the highways. He come over there for, for, for gas, you know, and uh, he said, you look at me. He said, you're Italian. Yes. You, you, you speak Italian. Yeah, I come from there, sure. He said, I need a 50 gallon of gasoline. I said, Captain, you want me to go to jail? No, you don't go to jail. You give me 50 gallon of gasoline and I sign for a private. But I have no reputation. So I said to myself, if I, give, if I don't give it to him now, I give it. I put a button down, 50 gallon come down in this, in this, in this tank. I'll be back next week. The next week he'll be back. Jim, you gotta believe me. A station wagon, you know what a station wagon? About the same size. Mm -hmm. Full of food. Any kind of food you want, it was there. A hand like this. 
a chicken that I can't get in the five gallon can. I don't know what he has to do. Bag in the blah 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 blah, blah your name. What was that? He cut me inside. Come here. Come on. That's yours. I says, Captain, you help me, I help you. What we did, the, the, the house we rented it was an old lady with an old man. And this old man spoke pretty good English. He said, uh, we're going to have a feast for the whole neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> I look at your kid, but you gotta use it. Mm -hmm. Except the chicken like king, you can say it, you know. Yeah. You can. <laughs> oh. I tell you, you don't blame, but it's, it's, a, it's, it's a gospel truth. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, those poor kids, they were can, they were dirty, and give me soap and everything else. So you, you were in Antwerp for a while. Oh, yeah. In At the border, see? Antwerp is a nice time. I mm -hmm. like it. Tell, tell Jim about the march that you got. Yeah, or, yeah. The march across the continent, you know, from Belgium all the way to, you marched all the way across France, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's the Oh, yeah. Well, we, well, we, the big city we took, the first one was Cherbourg, France. From Cherbourg, we started, ba 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 ba, -ba until we got to Paris. When we got to Paris, we took my division, we took a Paris, listen to me, we took a Paris in the evening, around four o'clock. We crossed, we left across the other side of Paris and we, 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 we camped there. Two goddamn German soldiers, you know, on top of the, the Arche de Triomphe. They were shooting like hell. Somebody pick them up, pa, pa, they come down. <laughs> you, you damn fool, no, you, you, what can you do? You got an army there, two soldiers. Fanatic. And then, uh, and that's the, the following day, the 28th Division from Pennsylvania, marching parade in Paris. The 4th Division took a Paris, they had to stand guard on the other side. <laughs> How do you like that, Robert? But the people were taking care of them. Yeah. And uh, yeah. well, the from there when uh, General Patton came in, oh, there was no 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 backup. General Patton was there. He made a speech, you know, he was building them. He did a platform, you know. Seventeen <coughs> the, the, the the point was seventeen. We got supposed to pick it up. He stand there with a two pistol, you know, in the front end. He said, what would be the best to pick up 17 in 24 hours or to spend four days and lose the same amount of men? Naturally, hey, the sooner the better. Let's get it over. If you die, you die. And that's what he did. He gave the order. Go ahead. We took 17 in less, less than 24 hours. What's 17? The, 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 the number, right? Ah, okay, okay. <coughs> point it was the number, say, like, okay. a, say, Rosedale okay. or whatever. Okay, I'm trying to, okay. And, and he, like a strategic area inside. You know what I mean? You okay. are going to the, the, the proof in the garden. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And did you see Patton? Oh, yeah, it was, was in the platform. Say, you saw him? And I saw he, Patton, maybe not even 25 feet ahead of me. 25 feet. Patton, Eisenhower, De Gaulle. De Gaulle, uh, yeah. Montgomery, all of them, them. They were all there. Oh, yeah. yeah I like Jerry Montgomery. Yeah, you know. The, the, the British, I hit that sign, I bet you. <laughs> <laughs> he was a fanatic, you know. Yeah, Montgomery. Uh, well, then, what did you think of Patton? I love Patton. Yeah. General Bradley, I like General Bradley. The old man. Yeah. I like General Patton. You know, General Patton, it was, it was a little bit fanatic, mm -hmm. but he studied the Alexander the Great history. That's how I become a good general. I know. So he studied when he was in, in, the, in the West Point. He studied mm -hmm. the whole Alexander the Great. You know who was Alexander the Great? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. He was the bigger. Yeah, the young yeah. one, he died, right. he was uh, under 20, no, 25 years old when he died. Yeah. He got a killed neck. In the war, in the, in the battle, in Asia, yeah. and he was the most powerful. He was more powerful than uh, 
than uh, mm -hmm. Napoleon, mm -hmm. more part of Hitler, more part of the, wow. the, 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 the other one. What is yeah. Yeah. He was he was a powerful man, and his father. He was from Mesador. His father was a king. All right, all right. Now I had a good teacher from. I had a monk with teacher. <laughs> yeah, monk. Yes, I know those things. So after Paris. So after Paris, where did you go? Up to Paris, we hit the, you know, the highway. Highway, the Red Bull Highway, they used to call. The what? The Red, the Red Bull? Bull Highway. Red Bull Highway. The niggers, they used to have those trucks. They used, they used to run those trucks, you know, full of, they hear it, they, they, they stop, and they start to dig, and they went in the hole. <laughs> they were from other animals. They were, uh, they read about the supply, you know, yeah. to bring the supply. But we, the, the best of the, the worst of all was when we rode the tank, on the top of the tanks. It was a danger, you know, yeah. they could pick you up a knife, but uh, that was the only way. Where'd you go from Paris? Where'd you go next? Well, then all the way up to Belgium, yeah. across the Belgium. Mm -hmm. So that's how you went, how, how you went, yeah. got to Ant Antwerp right. and... And then from Antwerp where? From Antwerp, from Antwerp we came back. I went, uh, we sailed from Antwerp, we came home, we, 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 we landed in New York. Hmm. That's when we come home. Hmm. Were you, yeah, were you, were you were wounded, no? Oh, yeah. yeah. So how did... I how spent that? three months in England. Two, two and a half months in the hospital in England. So how how were you wounded? I got a spinal concussion. One the railroad cannon the Germans used to use. Uh -huh. Paul was about 30, 30 feet, 40 feet ahead. We had a foxhole, no. It was the seven of us in there, machine gun. Three of us survived, the rest, the rest died. And from there, they flew me, they, they took, they put us on a, on a, on a, on an airplane to England, the hospital. Mm. I so was in the wheelchair for one month. Mm. So you were in a foxhole in Belgium then? Yeah. When, was this during the bulge? Yeah. And then they had a, a huge railroad gun. They, and they, 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 no, they, they, the vibration or whatever. Of the explosion, boom. Yeah. Near you. No. And I spent there oh, one month in the wheelchair. Did you, were you unconscious when when, when the shell hit? And no, I, I think my, my, my brain was good. The mm -hmm. only thing, no, I couldn't, no, I was almost paralyzed, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I had a concussion, no. But then they put him in the, in the stretcher. The one thing I don't like, the, the Red Cross. That hit the sun, I bet you know. You think I see a soldier, a soldier, on, on the ground, see, almost died. They see an officer, yes, but a soldier, no. What's the matter with him? Right in his nose, she's a red yeah, cross. The, 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 the officer that took care, the soldier that let him stay. Yeah. Why? And I told when we got discharged, Fort Dix, you know, he, the, she asked me, you want, you want the Red Cross? I said, no, the, the rest thing I do the Red Cross, I don't like them. I said, no offense against you, but I, I hit them. Yeah. I like the Salvation Army, yeah, but not the Red Cross. Oh, so you had the Red Cross, and they were... Helping. The Salvation Army, they helped me. Uh -huh. The Red Cross don't help me. Yeah. Understand? Yeah. So, so... So after they took you to England? Yeah. And in you were in the hospital, hospital for how long, you said? Three months? Three months, almost three months. Yeah. Yeah. That's when I hit the nurse. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so... Explain that again. You were you were in the uh, in the hospital. We were in the hospital, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, you got to go in the in the in the pool, swim in the, in the water pool, whatever you call them, in the morning mm -hmm. for uh, over an hour to, to reinforce your muscle, no, because you know. And uh, in the morning you're supposed to get up, fix your bed, like I told you before, and then crawl in again. You you I couldn't hardly get up, you know. So I asked the captain, I said, I'm not telling him to go to hell. But I didn't, as a gentleman, I didn't. Right. That's when I hit him, she called me the name. So the him. captain wanted you to go to the... The captain when you feel like, get up. Get up. And then crawl in again, fix your bed, then crawl in again. Then the nurse to go to hell, but as a gentleman, I didn't. Right. So then the nurse came over. Yeah, she's come over and she called me Dory Dago. 
and then the, the sec after that night in here. But the second time, she called me, Dero, De, your daughter, they go, wow. And that's when I, my buddy said, I won't take that now. Mm -hmm. And I didn't. And what did you do? I hit I, I, the cup, English cup, I became uh -huh. the cup. Mm -hmm. I hit the, the window. Mm -hmm. She said, good thing, I, I, I would, if I were to hit her, I would have hit her. It's a heavy sound, but I clear. Was she, was she an army nurse? She, she was an uh, American, yeah, for, for first lieutenant. Or first lieutenant? Yeah. That's why he was in trouble. <laughs> first oh, lieutenant, wow. American North. So the, Eng the English, they would, they, the English, they would treat you good. Yeah. But the, ah, she must have been worried, but I knows what she was. So, so afterwards, what, what immediately happened? They, what happened at that? Yeah, after me threw it through the window. And they, they, the MP got me, put me in a cold shower. They thought I was nuts. They put you in a cold, oh yeah. To, to cool me off, yeah. Oh, the captain was out, you know, I was Section S for five days. Section S? Eight. 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 I'm sorry. I, that's what I was crazy. My captain was on a five days pass to London, see? When he come back, he didn't find me there. So he come up and got me. He asked me what happened. I told him what happened. But not so smart. I went on the third right. It was one, two, three. I went on the top. I had a steel helmet. They were crazy. I said, I hit him in the goddamn head. <laughs> But <laughs> the patients, the other patients, were they, they, that was a psych ward. Well, we were. That's why I was crazy. <laughs> to hit that man. I told him, but Captain, what happened? And why, why did I hit him? He says, okay, you'll be all right. He took me back again where I was before. And you I never saw the, the I, I never saw the, the woman again. No. Then nurse, I never saw no more. God knows what they did for shit for that. Of course, they, they never reprimanded her, huh? The same, yes, no. calling you, calling you a dig. Yeah. But uh, so then they, they sent me to send me to Philadelphia Hospital. They sent me they, to Paris. They hospital. send you to Par Paris. Paris Hospital. I like that. Especially in the springtime. Oh, like so now, what year? Would, so this was in in the spring of '45, right? What? In the spring what of year? 1945, when you went to Paris. Yeah. Okay. I like that in the spring. Oh. So they, they, they court martial you in Paris? That they court, they court martial me in England, not in Paris. In England. He's, he was sent to Paris. Okay. So they court martial in England. Mm -hmm. See, because of that, that's what they, they from, from England, I was supposed to come to Philadelphia. Okay. Right. But to punish me, from England, they sent me to Paris instead. They punish you. So you had a trial. In, in England, In right? England, yeah. A court martial trial. Court martial, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks to that, that priest, you know, I call him Father Black, his name. And he was your, your attorney? He was my... Advocate. advocate. Ad, okay, advocate, that's right. That's yeah, he, he helped me a lot. He went to the front of the corner and said, I wish you like somebody to call your name like that after you come up from the battle. And what, what did... Uh, huh? So, so your, your advocate, Father this, Black... This, this, this priest here, uh, priest, you know, Mm -hmm. He went right in front of the, 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 the colonel. The, the colonel, who yeah. is the judge, right? Yeah, he's a man, a man in charge. He said, "I wish you like somebody to call you that." And what did the colonel say? He didn't answer. They didn't. No, you, especially with the man who was who got out, he got out from the hospital. He was wounded in, in a war. Mm -hmm. Oh, he was good. Oh, I love. Oh, I, I like him for a long time. You know. For, but, yeah. Obviously, what happened was they slightly had to do something because. Right. Try to assault an officer, right? Which but is. instead of doing anything on a permanent basis, I mean, we're all they have to point. You don't supposed to strike an officer no matter okay. what the, the circumstances. So he went to instead of being discharged to the states, he was discharged to Europe. Okay, so he was dis right. okay. I and, then, and then from there, he came from Paris. He came back to home. He came back to the United States after Paris. Okay, so you were he was in Paris as a civilian, or he was, right? No, he was on. He was Serving um, a sentence, I guess. Oh, no, I wasn't civilian. I was in the army. Yeah. You're in the army. Okay, you were discharged. Yet. No. Oh, okay, so you were, you had no. to serve a sentence. I got discharged here in New York. Okay. New York. So how did you, how did you serve your sentence? Or you went to I'm Paris? Really you you in, the in the hospital. And you're in, you rest of the hospital. In the hospital again, yeah. Oh. But when I was in the hospital, I was getting sick, Do nothing. No, you go crazy. That's when I asked the colonel, another colonel, to give me a job. Okay. He sent me to MP during night. 
So they bend the rules a lot based on you know okay. what the situation was. Okay. But the course is, don't never do that again. Don't ever strike an officer, no matter what. Yeah. That's the wrong thing to do. Mm. Then he, he taught me pretty good. He was a normal man. So, so it, it, did you, were you feeling better at this time when you went to Paris and, I mean, were you, was your bag getting better and were you able to, of course, you were able to walk and... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Then I was pretty good shape then. Yeah. The only thing is that they didn't, they, 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 I was not exactly cured, you know what I mean, not exactly strong enough. Mm-hmm. Um... So what, what, you came home in 1946? Yeah. From Paris? He came, well, from, and yeah, from, actually he came home from, from uh, Antoine. Okay, you went back to Antoine. Yeah. from Antoine. Mm-hmm. Big, big, big come welcome back. Seems to me that uh, I went in with a big convoy and I come home with a big convoy. Big convoy. Yeah. And you know, funny thing, when we were in high sea, my brother told he was come, I was come home and he was going to Germany. So you passed. It's something, it's, it's tele, make a telegram, no, I went, I, tele, I uh, telegrammed him. And so sad, he, was, he answered my telegram. Hmm. My brother and I, we met in high sea. I was come home and he was going there. He was there. going to Germany. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Barely. Do you remember hearing about the atom bomb? What would you think about that? No, we didn't hear that. That was no atom bomb. No. Well, did you hear about it in Paris or just curious? They never told you what happened in Japan? No, we never heard that. What was it like on, on VE Day in, in Europe when when the Germans surrendered? And of course, you were in Paris at that, by that time, right? Or in VE Day, it was, well, you know. Everybody started to ring the, the machine. The, bell, the church was ringing the bell. It was holiday. You know. but wish, yeah. yeah. Nation was the one. Was the world was over. Yeah. But not was worrying in, 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 in Europe, but not in Japan. Not in Japan, no. Yeah. Yeah. So when you. Uh You got, what was your rank still? Was you was still private first class? Well, you know, one time I became a buck sergeant. <laughs> but then I was busted. <laughs> 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 that's also a written. I, I, I didn't give a damn on that. But, yeah. But, uh, well, well, I, well, I was in Paris also then, and they gave him another job there. They gave him two or three jobs there. To, 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 to be a tailor, no? Right. To be a tailor. Okay. We used to supply them. You know, 31 machine, got, mach, machine, so like I had a dining shop, mm -hmm. 31 women. They used to work, you no, know, to fix the uniform, the seats, you know, for the hospital. And, and I was the only one. Tell them. And they make me a sergeant. They had to be a T5 sergeant. Otherwise, I couldn't have the job, yeah. And, uh, uh, and uh, then I don't, I, mean, I don't like what they do, but I, I got tired of it. I told somebody to go someplace. <laughs> and they caught the mushroom, and they took it great. <laughs> I, 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 I was a tough, was tough for everyone. So what was it like when you came home? When, when I came home, came with the first thing I did, you got to believe me. I tried to, to drive a car, uh -huh. a virtual car, I couldn't. And then I drove station wagon, big trucks, semi truck, double shift. You know. I come home, I got to be on them, and I froze. In 1939, I almost got killed here. From Stanton Avenue and up down the Washington Boulevard, by the, by the state troopers were. Some assault. Mm. And from that time, when I come home, first thing I tried, no more. And I never did. Mm. Up to now, I never tried. When you came home, was there, 
Is there like any parades or? First thing they do, listen to me, young man. Not even four or five months, I got a letter from uh, to be a, a, a jury trial, to be on jury. Sure. <clears throat> so I went down there, you know, I walked him down that time. And I went down and see somebody in charge. I said, do you send this lady? He said, yeah. I said, yeah, shut up, you know where? I'm not going to. You're going to go. Go ahead, let me put him in jail. I just come home from the war. You think I'm going to? Yeah. I, 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 I come. So you just come. Yeah. Just five months ago, I come home. You send me. You know I ain't going to be no. They never called me again. They never called me again. After now, they never called me. Jim yeah. wanted to know what the kind of reception you got when you got home. Was there any kind of reception, any kind of... When I come home? Yeah. yeah. Or oh, yeah, that was nice, huh? Yeah, June. No, pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> when we get off the boat, there was one guy. <laughs> he saw the door. He carried a door. He had a door. <laughs> and they saw him like this. <laughs> we used to be... <laughs> and you know how he got through? He went around, put the door, with somebody else from inside the crib, and that's how the dog got in again. <laughs> but it was a beautiful dog. It was a little pup, you know what I mean? One of those big dogs. You know? I, I'm going I'm going and no matter what happened to me, I'm going to keep this dog. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, well. How do you, how do you think the did the war change you at all? How, how yes you... and no. Mm -hmm. It gave me more experience. I became more of a man, you know what I mean, than I was before. And I became more uh, good to people, I should say. Yeah, I was very good to people. I didn't resent anymore like I used to before, you know what I mean? Yeah. Before you come, first if you touch me like that, I wouldn't fight, you know. Yeah. Because I temper, you know what I mean? But then I learned to be a little bit more, you know what I mean, a little bit more. Did you? Did you did you feel more American? Did you did not you, really? I knew you were born. You were you were Italian, but after the war, did you? Well, I didn't like the beginning what they used to do, you know. Right. But then you get you mean, old. I guess the incident with the you get old those things. You get old. You know. I remember when I had to go down and fingerprint my 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 finger down the court card, the corners. You no. Know. I didn't have to because I. I well, you're, Amer you're American. I don't know, but I don't know, see? So I went down and... and well, that's it. Really, really sure. I, as I say, you know, you, you get more mature, you went through hell, you know, you have a little bit more patience, and also... When you got home and... You went back to being a tailor? When I come home, I was going to go sign in for a... Uh, and for, for, for one year to get it, what they call it, 52 20. For 52 weeks, you're supposed to get $20 a week. A week. Oh. Yeah. And I, I didn't even go there. I raised it, but I didn't even go. The, I was in my, well, how long? Well, I used to come home at 4 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning. One time, about two months. Five o'clock in the morning, I got home. My mother came down from upstairs. She gave me my lunch in the bed. Go to work or don't come here no more. Either you go to work or don't come here no more. My mother. Hmm. So what I did, I didn't, I didn't change the clothes. I got the six o'clock bus, six o'clock at that time. I went downtown. Seven o'clock, I started to work. And that's it. And they collect nothing. My mother was a tough woman. She started bad out with me pretty good. I want you to go to work. If you don't go to work, don't come to this house no more. Get out. So this this 52 weeks, 20... That's part of the GI Bill. That's part of the GI Bill. Yeah. Okay. That there was a comrade about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I... But you didn't, you, nah. you didn't go for it. Did you, didn't have, you didn't have any problems even though you were dishonorably discharged? No, he was honorably discharged. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. No, no, okay, no. he was honorably discharged. Right, right. Oh, but, yeah. Are you okay? Okay. Okay. I got, 
I got a good situation. I said, my regular screen. Okay, we're sorry. Yeah, he figured he was little. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, hey, when he did that. listen to me. Nobody called you dirty dago right. go up and they didn't do nothing. Uh, he was discharged. He was discharged. You were discharged with honor, and then you. Right. Yeah, you know, I got a real big charge. Yeah, real discharge. Yeah. My big charge is 100 percent. Mm -hmm. Do you think the? Do you think the after war and the way Italian Americans fought? Do you think it changed people's perceptions of? of, of I don't know. I can't tell you, young man. I I, I really don't know. And um, maybe in, in a certain certain way, maybe. Yeah. But uh, to me, I couldn't know. No. Personally, you know what I mean? No. I could tell you one thing, you know, but the Genovese family, mm -hmm. on the corner on Major Street to Alarm, there used to be a big saloon there, Joe Cross saloon. Birds come right now, we used to go have a beer. Two men come in. Did I ever tell you this? Two men come in with a white tie head from New York. They were looking for French Genovese. Said, That's me. Mr. Genovese, yeah. Can we, can we talk to you private? Let's go in the saloon. Yeah. Who do you think was that? They were from the Genovese family from Hoboken, New Jersey. I'm not even very still alive. <clears throat> we are here to see all the people by name Genovese. We want to help them. It was good. It was not. Uh, yeah. We are from Hoboken, New Jersey. We know they know the whole goddamn mystery about me. Where I was born, how long I've been in the United States, how I've been young. You are tell. Surprise. The virtual can tell. We weren't pushing business in Hoboken, New Jersey. Or we can put a business here for you here. You're a tailor. We put a tailor shop for you. When I see the white tie, I know that you forget about it. I told my mother, what pin did I got me? <laughs> <laughs> so I said, well, I don't know, I don't know. Come back a little while, maybe I'll give you an answer. They come back again. As a matter of fact, I'm going, within three months, I'm going to get married. I settled down then. I didn't stay too long. I came home in 46, 47, I got married. Mm -hmm. Hey, one year. 47, I got married. Hey. 49, your sister was born. Mm -hmm. But, uh, no, I never, I never, well, I could have been, I could have been dead, no. Yeah. They give you a favor, but they expect a favor from you if they need it. Which, in a way, you can't blame. You know, but you no, know, I, I live a cleaner life all my life. I have no, no record against me. You can go down the courthouse any place. <laughs> my name is Nolan. Yeah. That's about it I can tell you about that. Uh, so. Any final thoughts? Any anything else would you like to say? Well, um, you you, you ask me a question. Sum up. Sum 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 up. Sum up about. Talk about your experience as a whole. What do you, how do you feel about your experience during the war and when you came? Well, back? naturally, <clears throat> the begin you know like it. I try. The first time I try, you no, know, as I say, I don't want to go in yard because hey, it was during war time. And, but uh, when I when I first got there, then hey, yeah, you make the best. I don't know what I mean. Mm -hmm. You become a good soldier. You become about yourself. But uh, civilian life is civilian life, you know. Unless you go to make a career out of it, which maybe I made a mistake. I don't think so, but maybe I don't know, because I had a I, I would. I, I don't know how many points I had I could come okay. up before, see? Right, yeah. Points. But the, 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 thing, the thing I, I didn't want to do, 
that from from the war left over in Europe, they were going to send me to Japan again. Okay. Not me alone, but the whole, you know. And I said, no, I don't mm -hmm. want to go home. But if I, I have to sign more, they have to join, see? And I never join for nothing. Never volunteer for nothing. One thing I learned, no volunteer for nothing. <laughs> yeah. Because if something happened, eh, you volunteer for, you can blame anything by you. I know, I did once. They come up with a 30-day pass from England mm -hmm. to go to join the, the 82nd Airborne. After well, 30 days, I go home for 30 days, you know. Well, I've done my work, you know, I never thought about it. I cannot go home, but uh, it takes take eight, eight to ten days to get home. <laughs> <coughs> but anyhow, I saw. But it was... The sergeant is like, yeah, no. He said to me, you, you did wrong. In Italian, he spoke to me in Italian. Oh, yeah. I said, well, why? Because, you know, Air Force, you know, Air Force, you know what it is. You're going with the Gladys. <sighs> get out if you can. I'll let you. I said, get out if I can. I'll tell you. The next couple of days, he took me to the commanding officer and said, this boy didn't understand. I had a good excuse. You don't understand what he did. Oh, then, then they take me out. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, <laughs> I had to go to the second airborne, which was destroyed, God knows. Mm -hmm. With a glass, you know, you go with a glass. Yeah. You know what a glass is. Yes, I know. <laughs> oh, well. But, um, I like, I like. You had more of a right to be in this country after you fought in the war? Well, yes. 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 Sometimes I'm going to check the other. I have a talk about the Italian army. You compare the Italian army with the American army. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he was in the best of years, you know. <laughs> I said, look what happened to Italy. 300,000 prisoners one time. <laughs> he gets a medal in the morning. And who is this? One uh, well, friend of mine. You're famous. 92 years old. Ninety years old. They come to see me every once in a while, downtown. Yeah. We meet downtown. And then he served the Italian army. He was yeah. He was he was well yeah you yeah, when you there when you reach it, twenty one years old you got to be in the army regardless. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's and he was a Bersaglieri. A Bersaglieri. During World War Two. Yeah, but no, the war was not this was before. Oh, it was before the war. Before, before, before. Was that right before. It was oh, okay. it was like a. The, the the Spanish uh, Revolution oh, yeah? and the, what was the other one? The Ethiopian War, yeah, yeah. No, in Ethiopia. Yeah. And uh, oh, I said, Italian yeah. language, go ahead. Oh, it gets a better one, no. I like to fish more, but yeah. we are a cousin, we are a cousin. So I just, uh, Thank you very much. And now let me ask you a question. Okay. I did you like my English? Huh? Do we have speak English? Si, sí, parli bene. No, non troppo bene. La pronuncia. Non troppo, no. La pronuncia, non c'è. No, non c'è. No, non c'è. Oh, it's there. But, uh, but you know, I'm an import, anyhow, you know that. <laughs> yeah. so, <laughs> I, 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 everybody's when you say, so, Mr. Genovese, I like your pronunciation. I said, yeah, maybe you want this, but I, I want you to know that I'm an import. No? <laughs> You're an import. <laughs> 1937 import. Yeah, it's true, no? Yeah. See, my brother Tony, he speaks English, so you don't even know that he was born there. And he speaks German, too. Wow. He learned German, but he was there two years in Germany. But uh, he came in, he was only 10 years old, 11 years old, yeah. If you come yeah. below the, the 12, you learn pretty good. Above 12, forget about it. Yeah. It's no longer there. That's what I was told. And they, I believe with that, too. What yeah. I think is really interesting is now, like, if somebody criticizes or says something about the country, you know, and like, oh, we're in the old country, and then we're like, you know, and he'll defend the United States, and he'll say, well, you liked it so much, go, go back. back and listen. Yeah, 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 yeah. How many times I told Uncle Jack, but the United States is sinking. I said, my father, 
Non ti piace, ma ti è andata in Italia. I just want to say, well, thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. Thank you for your I service. I hope I can get no? You have very much, yes. If you don't think you want to go around with me, no, I'll be brief. Okay. Tante grazie. My memory is no longer what it used to be. Oh, ricordi bene, no. Ti ringrazio tanto.